So last night it's raining and my windshield wipers had started to get kind of kind of curved fluff up there. They were, they were wrinkling up and cracking and leaving some crappy spots in the white pattern across my glass. And I got this thing where I like my glass nice and clear. I mean, call it the paramotorist pilot inside of me, but I need high visibility. And when it ain't wiping the water off, I don't get that. And I get frustrated and it, it, it does something to me psychologically. There's some crows flapping about. I can't not look when I see something flying. For nearly 30 years, I've been changing my own wiper blades on my vehicles. And it's been the same way every time. I go down to the local whatever and I buy the two wiper blades that go on the vehicle. I look at what size they are, I go get that size, I put them on. Well, it seems that in some time around or before 2017, because that's the year model of this truck, somebody somewhere decided to change the attachment style of windshield wipers. So I bought the wrong kinds. I went outside, opened them up, went to change it. I couldn't figure out how to get the stupid wiper off of the little pole that, you, that, that it attaches to. The little bracket, the windshield wiper attachment bracket, I think is what you would call that. Some gangster looking dudes were parked next to me. Their car was parked next to me. They were walking out with their, whatever they bought at that store. And I said, man, I've been changing my wiper blades for almost 30 years. And this is the first time I've never been able to get them off. Am I getting old or something? Am I retarded? It was raining and I needed to do it because it was raining. It's still raining. He don't say anything. He don't say a word. He, he, he stands there and he looks at it. And he reaches up and he pinches two little clips and it popped loose. Now there's also another thing. I didn't have my glasses on and it was dark and I was tripping because I had been trying to look at it. I, I left these spectacles at home and I worked all day without my glasses so I already had kind of a mild headache from that. It's not that big of a thing, but when you read all day and then your vision changes and you read all day again, it messes with my psyche again. I'm, I'm a clear glass looker. I like to be able to see. So that was frustrating to go all day without seeing real good. And then missing that, dude reaches over, he pops it off. He said, yeah, man, I had one like that last time. <laughs> and he kind of grinned at me and like, he said, they changed it. <laughs> Anyhow, I learned how to do it and I went back in Walmart and they traded out for me for the ones that go in here, which were $3 more, I might add, and more expensive. The mechanism was more expensive. And I go back out to the truck, I get in the truck and it stopped raining and I done wasted like 40 minutes Trying to get new wiper blades. I ain't, I ain't turned them on yet. This is this is the next day. It rained all night. I get in the truck to drive down the road to go pick up my wife from the uh, auto mechanic shop, and I guess they work. I guess they won't fall off. I don't know. <laughs> and rain a drop. After all that, I could have just waited and ordered the ones that fit the truck and have them delivered. And I wouldn't even had to go walk through a store twice and deal with customer service, which was pleasant. I'll give you that. They, that lady was nice. She knew I fucked up. I knew I fucked up. It was a cow pissing. I, one time I looked over and there was a cow having a baby once. I was like, wow, welcome to the world, calf. I'm currently driving through the Kasachi National Forest. I believe this is Kasachi land. I know there's a Kasachi forest down towards Natchitoches, and I believe that this is connected to that forest. But this is way up on the north end of it, and there's some gaps in it, I believe. I'll have to refer to a map to see if I'm saying that right. Uh-oh, there's a cross in the ditch. Somebody didn't make that curve is what it seems like to me. Never in a million years would I have said that 
eight something thousand of you guys have uh, have signed up to subscribe to this channel to watch these videos. I don't know if you all watch them or not, but thank you. Thank you for the guys that do, the girls that do, the, the kids. I met some, some kids. Hey guys, I'm trying to curb the language. I've, I've been giving it some real effort lately and it's it's difficult, you know, those those speaking habits, the language habits that a person develops are deeply ingrained in neurological pathways that are hard to break. So that's what learning is, is uh, trailblazing new neurologic pathways in the brain. I'm addicted to it. It's a great feeling to build those, those connections in there and make things come together. Learning, that's what learning is. That's, uh, you know, building brain nerve pathways. I'm a fan of it. I, I love it. The YouTube video stuff, I don't know where that fits in. Am I learning anything by sharing the, the life with you guys? I don't know. It feels good. It feels good to have a, a platform to share what, you know, your life. This is what I'm doing here. I'm sharing my life. I don't have uh, you know, I don't have any actors. I don't have any production ideas. I'm just going through this world and doing what I'm doing with this camera here and a camera there and you know, on the helmet. And <laughs> that's that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching the channel. That's to the subscribers. If you like the channel, if you want more Again, it, it could be random stuff. I, I'm coming up on the season now where paramotor flying is gonna get kind of slim. And there will be other things that I'll pick up the camera and wanna do. Because editing video is my hobby. It's my other hobby. You know, I don't wanna treat it like a job. I know I get a little bit of money. Ad revenue, uh, Patreon supporters. That stuff is really cool. But I do this because I like it. And I've been I've been thinking about the exclusive content on the Patreon specifically. I'm thinking that I, I want to share everything. I don't know if I want anything to be exclusive. I don't know what kind of exclusivity I can do. Because of what I was just saying about how I just film my lifestyle, which part of it do I pick to share and which part of it do I pick to not share? And it just feels awkward to have some sort of huge golden nugget that I've spoke to on camera. and and mentioned and, and to not share that with as many people that I can, you know, to make it public. That's the idea is just to be genuine. And when I'm holding stuff back that I'm videoing and editing and putting out there, I feel like I'm not being genuine. And that goes against what I initially wanted for this channel. I think the exclusive content will just be content. And I'm going to give it to the, uh, Patreon supporters immediately. I'm gonna dump it on there as soon as I get the video edited, and then I'm gonna let it post like twice a week, maybe three times if it starts stacking up. I've got a bunch of videos stacked up that I could share with everyone, and I think that is what I'm gonna do. I think you guys may find it interesting, you may not. That's where I wanna go with this channel. You know, I'm, I do a lot of paramotor flying, but I do a lot of paramotor videos, but I think I'm going to be more selective and, or non-selective. I think I'm going to be more non-selective and just do whatever in the hell is I'm doing and, and talk to you guys, just share my thoughts with the audience. I, I, I'm guessing that you guys here because you like the way I think. I, that's the only reason I subscribe to anybody is, you know, I, I like this, you know, I like the way he's thinking. So maybe, maybe that's why you're here. I, I do understand it. I'm, I'm a fan, a follower, a watcher of several of you guys. So it's, it's an interesting thing when two YouTubers can look into each other's life and the rest of the subscribers that, that may not produce any content, I've just got a uh, just a blindness, just a blindness looking at, at your life. And, you know, I know some of your names, some from the comments, but it's the ones that are producing that you can see into the other side of their life and, and mirror each other. It gives you kind of a kind of an interesting connection when when you have uh, you know some popularity between you. It's it's kind of an it's kind of a neat thing. I, I love all you YouTubers out there that are making content. I wish I could watch all of it all the time, but there's so much. There's so much. It's uh. But again, when we see each other, I, I know I realize who you are. I know who you are if I'm watching your channel. You know who I am because you're watching my channel, and that's a that's a very interesting 
special thing that happens amongst YouTubers, I suspect. That's the way I feel, and I guess technically I'm a YouTuber. It's not a title I ever would have given myself even after being on the YouTube platform since, you know, the, the all years. I never would have imagined that, that I would call myself a YouTuber. But, but I guess technically that's what this is. That's what this is. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going. I should probably turn on the GPS. I hate fiddling with the phone when I'm driving. I can hold a camera and drive just fine. I'm looking where I'm going. I've got a hand on the wheel. It's no different than having it in my lap and talking to a passenger. So vlogging while I'm driving has become a thing. And I know the audio is not that great. I, I don't. I mean, you're gonna hear the background noise and I talk loud enough and the camera may have a good enough mic that that's not an issue for you guys. But again, it goes towards the, the good content it has to have good audio, I think. God bless you, Woody. Today's the day that uh, you made the video for me about stalls and uh, demonstrating what they should look like to the public. Mine was not a good demonstration of that because I had it set up wrong, so thank you for that. That was sort of my thought after we talked, and when you mentioned a brake position and like the, the mushy stall, that made a lot of sense because I'd always done like a two wraps or a wrap and a half on my previous uh, stalls and on a different wing, I might add. That was my first time with the paramotor, first time with the universal, so there's a learning curve to a wing when you get it and you try maneuvers like that. If you're not practiced up with those maneuvers on that particular glider, it doesn't take long. My feeling is that next time I go out there and perform some stalls on that exact same setup, that they will be much improved. I have a, a better control on the situation, kind of start honing where I'm going wrong. You do a maneuver, you study it, you practice it safe environment, and then you hone that skill. And it's just a skill. A lot of, a lot of people are real scared about the, the free fall feeling, the nature of it. You're not gonna fall out of the freaking harness, guys. It's not like you're letting go. You're still tied in. It's uh, If you've got altitude and a safe box and, and safety measures in place, the risk is very calculated. And, you know, don't, don't fuck it up. You just don't fuck it up. You, you gotta go through the entire motion. The stall, the recovery, the pendulum, the release. It's gotta be well studied, well thought out, rehearsed on a simulator with an instructor present, and then demonstrated in a sky safe environment. So I gotta keep throwing this disclaimer in there. Oh, birds. And I bet I didn't get those dudes flying. But I can only point the camera at one thing, and it's, it's when I'm filming something out of the window, that is a difficult time to drive because I'm concentrating on catching the shot with the camera and not the road. I can talk and point this thing at me, but I see all these interesting things that I want to video while I'm driving down the road. So I'm coming up in Menden, Louisiana. This is the parish seat. We have parishes here. We don't have counties in this state. It's the only one that has parishes. It's a French thing. Louisiana has heavy French culture. That's where the Cajun Creole sort of jive comes from is uh, France. But I'm way north of there. I'm, I'm far out of Cajun country. I'm, some people call me Cajun. I may have a little in me. I did live down there a little while. Hung out with them boys talking about, come see, wearing the white boots. Yeah, I've gone down to the Tabasco factory. <laughs> yeah, them boys was fun. I enjoyed hanging out and living down there for a few months and still got a lot of friends there. When I went to pharmacy school, the large uh, majority of my friends were from South Louisiana. Like that was their culture where they grew up and they were just coming to college up here in my country. And so it was it was interesting making the jokes. They, they call us the rednecks and we call them the coon asses. I don't know, that may be racist to say that now, I'm not sure. I forget which point I was making when I start concentrating on other stuff that, that's going on. My brain power has to shift. You can hear it in my vlog sometimes. I fly and when something goes weird and I gotta focus, I stop talking and convert all that, all that thinking power over to the task at hand. I noticed reviewing the stall videos that every time I went into an entry, I groaned. And the groan was not from fear, it was from fucking it up, from going in crooked, asymmetrically. I was like, Ugh! like, dang it. It sounded, it sounded more like I was trying to hold in a turd or something, but that wasn't the case. I was sort of ticked at myself for not doing it correctly. Who knows, who knows how, where this video's going. I never know what I'm gonna do with these things when I film them. 
I just blather on at the mouth and try to get to some kind of point and do my other things that I'm doing, driving or flying, etc. Can you see the town? That may be a thing. I should probably start doing my vlogs like this so that you guys can see out the back glass. Welcome to Minden. I'm still turning this truck like I'm pulling a dang trailer. I pull a trailer so much that I drive the truck just like there's one behind it all the time, no matter what. Oh, I think I'm going to have to run this uh, yellow light. Did, oh, it's, ah, fuck, I ran a red light. That's no good. I'll probably get a ticket for that. They saw me coming, though. It was not a not a dangerous run. It was like it turned red as it, as it went by. The other one ain't had time to turn green good yet. That's, that's that situation. Comment statute of limitations have run out on that event. Oh boy, oh, I remember this neighborhood. Let me tell you a story about this neighborhood while we're talking. One time, I took my children out of school for a week and took them on a ski trip to Colorado, a family vacation. In the middle of between Christmas and spring break, when it was dead in between those two busy times, we went to the mountains and went snowboarding, snow skiing, hung out. Family vacay, fun stuff. Well, I got a like a letter from the truancy office. Like, you have to appear down here in front of these people on this date. And the date they gave me was a holiday. And I double checked it and thought, is that correct? And so I came down here, took off work, had to, had to get somebody in there to work for me at the drugstore, went down there. They were locked up tighter than a frog's butt. See, I, I didn't cuss right there. I could have put in a vulgar, filthy cuss word right there, but I didn't. So I'm trying to do better, for real. I don't know, maybe I like the cussing. Maybe I should only cuss on exclusive content, and maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe that's what I'll do for exclusive content. Unbleeped language, and then I'll bleep it for the regular channel so that everybody's happy. But I was so hot about that. I was so hot about that. I wrote on my hate letter, on the application that, that or the the appointment thing that they served me to go there. I wrote a hate letter on that thing. You made me do this. I had to take off my job, a providing taxpayer to this community, and you're gonna take me out of work for a day and not be here for court stuff? Like, mm, I was upset. I didn't get a response or any other thing about that. That was pretty upsetting to me. His teacher also told me, my youngest son, that he was the smartest kid in the school. I think this is where we're going right here. I don't know where my wife is, but it says customer parking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna park right over here, the Ford store. Rolling up in here in a Toyota, deep. And now we're just waiting on Jennifer. It's weird, there's mirrored glass. Can we see us? Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> That's a bit of rambling with Kylo. I'm gonna text my wife, tell her I'm here. Truck makes funny noises after you turn it off. Your stuff, servos turning, like fuel pumps draining out or something like that. Some backup pump. That's what it sounds like. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm spinning. The motor spinning. Turning something. Some clockwork. Machinist stuff happening there. All right. Um, this, this feels awkward. Now, I'm just gonna cut the video here. If you liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up. I don't, I guess we'll call it the drive to Minden. This should be the drive to Minden. Rain day. It was supposed to be raining all day. It's not rain to drop. It's because I got those new wipers. That's what it was. Well, locate my family, get the day done, and we'll be back with you for the next vlog. Much love, everybody.